What's up everybody, Fritz here. In today's video, we're gonna be flushing out the brake system on the M235i. Now you might be saying to yourself, Fritz, why are we flushing out the brake system if we're not changing our brakes? Well, for one, you might have enough meat on your brakes and you might be also going to the track. So in addition to having enough meat on your brakes and tires, a lot of tracks would want you to have a recent brake flush as well in order to have your car on the track. But if you're somebody like me who doesn't take your car to the track, and you want some additional benefits of having fresh brake fluid, one reason might be that you have moisture in the system. Moisture in the system is going to lead to inconsistent braking, as well as the brake drying system in the BMWs to over-exaggerate that drying system, especially in the rain. And I noticed this while going at freeway speeds in the rain. Somewhere around 60 to 70, the car will all of a sudden either lose power or brake, and that was a huge problem. Now, the best way to determine whether you have excessive moisture in the system or not is by taking it to a shop or buying a moisture meter yourself and putting it into the brake fluid reservoir to determine whether you are above that one or 2% mark. And if you are within that one or 2% margin, then the problem for your brakes might be something else. But if you're like me, which I found out that my brake fluid cap was actually loose and you have way beyond that one to two percent mark it's time to flush the system and hopefully this will fix our problem the great thing about doing this in your own garage is that you're going to save a little bit of money and because of that you can spend a little bit more on the actual brake fluid that you're getting and i would recommend that you get this power bleeder system here it's not that expensive and in addition to that it has a direct adapter to attach to the brake fluid reservoir and here i would recommend that you only get two fluid reservoir bottles one, to actually drain the system. Two, you could actually be pouring into the empty canister which your fresh brake fluid came from. Because we are doing this in the garage, you can get it done with a single jack, but I would recommend that you have four jack stands to make the process go by a little bit faster and optimize your time here. Unfortunately, brake fluid is extremely harmful to your pets. So you won't want your guard dog around for this one. Sorry, buddy. Start by removing your wheels, or at least the rear passenger wheel. Now go ahead and pop the hood. And as you can see, it's starting to rain, so we are on a bit of a time crunch here. Now undo this top cover panel here, which is held in by three 10 millimeter twist nuts. Do them to reveal the brake fluid reservoir. Once you've released the panel, go ahead and get your bottle ready and clean off this area to make sure that we don't get any dirt or grime into the system. And what we're gonna do is using a turkey baster, pull out as much fluid as we can. That way the contaminated fluid doesn't go through the entire system or we at least limit the amount of contaminated fluid that will go through the system when we flush it. So right there you can see that's about as much fluid as we're gonna get from the reservoir. Now we can connect the actual power bleeder. Now make sure that you have a good seal by installing the gasket at the top of the adapter here before screwing it onto the brake fluid reservoir. And now connect the adapter hose to the main power bleeder hose. Then tighten down the connections with a 17 and 14 millimeter wrench. With the hoses connected and nothing inside the tank, we wanna check for leaks. So go ahead and pump it up. And once you pump it up to about 10 PSI, go ahead and hold it here for about a minute and take a careful listen for any hissing. If you don't hear anything, and if the PSI holds at 10, then you're good to go. All that you have to do now is slightly twist the top and bleed out that pressure. Now we can fill it up with brake fluid. And I would recommend that when you're doing this, you have at least two holes here, that way you have laminar flow coming out when you're pouring it in. Now for this second bottle that we're about to put in, we're only gonna put in about two thirds of it. Reason why is because we wanna have some left over just in case we need to top off the reservoir. And we have a third bottle here just in case. Now put back on the top and snug it down. Go ahead and get it to 15 PSI. So right about there is good. And let's start off at the passenger rear tire. 
Now, the reason that we want to start from the rear passenger side is because this is the furthest most point from the brake fluid reservoir. So this is actually going to take the longest and should theoretically have the dirtiest brake fluid here. Now, the bleeder valve is going to be on the back side of the caliper. Go ahead and remove the dust boot and clean off any dirt that might be there. If you have a closed 11 millimeter box wrench, go ahead and put it on first. But I only have the ratcheting kind, so what I'm gonna do is put on the hose and then we will open the valve. And to ensure that you have consistent flow, make sure that you maintain that 10 to 15 PSI at the reservoir. So as that's bleeding, just make sure that the bottle that's going to receive it is on a sturdy surface or it even has some wiring so that you can hang it. That way the line isn't stressed. Now, if you get to a point like this where the fluid actually stops flowing, even at the 10 to 15 PSI mark, what you might have to do is crank up the bleeder to 25 PSI and then go inside the car and hit the brake a few times. and look for any change in the line itself when you do pump the brakes. So as you can see, after we applied that brake and additional pressure, we got a whole lot more fluid coming in and now there's no more air bubbles in this line. Now we can go ahead and tighten this back up, remove the hose and attach it to this top portion of the bottle so we don't have any leakage. Put the dust boot back on, clean off any dirt or spilling that might have happened, and move on to the next one. Next up, we have the driver's side rear. And it seems like we are stuck again, so we gotta pump it back up to 25 and hit those brakes. Now we filled up our second bottle and there are no air bubbles in the line. Now on to the passenger front. Now the fronts actually have two bleeder valves, one in the front and one in the back. We're gonna wanna bleed the front one first. Since the front calipers are much closer, you might not need 25 PSI. So give 15 PSI a try again. However, I wasn't this fortunate and needed to go back up to 25 PSI. Now that we're air bubble free, go ahead and close it up before removing the hose and getting on to the rear bleeder valve. And don't forget to hit those brakes. Now let's finish up on the last caliper. Because of my poor eyesight, I'm looking for air bubbles because the old and new fluid look too similar to me. But if you have better eyesight, you can look for a dirty to clean look, or if you're more fortunate, you might have fluid that is a completely different color, which would make this process a whole lot easier to know when you flush the system. Once you've extracted the last bit of old fluid, close it up, remove the hose, and cap it off before releasing the pressure from the bottle, not the reservoir. This will ensure that you don't have any brake fluid splashing up on you when you release the pressure. With the pressure released, remove the adapter and have a bag or catch ready to make sure that no brake fluid drips all over the engine bay. Then test the fluid, which, since it's new fluid, should give you a 0% reading. Now hit the brakes a few times and top off if necessary. Finally, put back on the filter and cap before placing on the panel and closing the hood. And the last part before you can say that you're all done flushing your brake system is taking the car out for a test drive, which is what we're about to do. 
I actually got a little bit lucky here where those clouds that brought in the overcast actually shifted that way. And so we have a little bit of time of dry conditions before the rain comes back. So I'm gonna take full advantage of that, take it for a test drive. And the two things that you wanna look for during your test drive is, do you have good pedal feedback and are your brakes actually working? And then as soon as you're done with the test drive, go ahead and check the brake fluid reservoir to make sure that you're in between that min and max line. And as soon as you've done that, you're all done with your brake flush. And I'm actually glad that during this video, we hit a little bit of a roadblock because not every DIY project is gonna go by seamlessly. But knowing how to troubleshoot it and how to fix those problems is gonna be critical when you're working on your car. And if you have any questions at all, please leave them down in the comment section below. And if you're looking for anything that we use in this video, it's gonna be all in the description. And I'll see all of you guys in the next one.